What a wonderful day it is today. The sun is out and shining. I'm back on YouTube and nearly caught up with all my videos. Everything is really looking up for me at the moment. Everything is just going so well. And I'm just going to take a moment to sit back and kind of just take it all in and just enjoy this perfect moment. <sighs> hey there, buddy. Jesus Christ, what the hell, man? Didn't mean to scare you, buddy, old pal. I've just got some incredible news to share. Really? Oh, okay, well, why don't you go ahead and, and tell me this fantastic news that was worth nearly giving me a fucking heart attack. Fear of the Walking Dead is back! Isn't that fantastico? Why, yes, Scott. Fantastic news. Marvelous news. Great, great news! <laughs> Joshy, are you okay? Oh, I'm more than okay, Scott. I'm more than okay. Uh, I'm feeling fucking incredible at the moment. And if you want, just excuse me for one second, alright? I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> no more. No more being walking dead reviews. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. No, Jassy Jass, no! <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck's going on? Jeez, what the fuck? What happened? What the fucking hell? Where am I? What's going on? Jassy, Jassy. Who is that? Who's saying that? Who's there? Who's there? Who's saying that? It's me, the spirit of Scotty G. Didn't think you'd get away from me that easily, did ya? Scott, what's going on? Where am I? Welcome to the Fear of the Walking Dead dream world. I mean, it looks exactly the same as the real world. Just a bit more yellow, really. Yeah, well, this is the best I can do in Sony Vegas, okay? Look, just please tell me what you want, okay? What I want, buddy, is Padre. And until I have it, you are trapped here forever. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. The hell is Padre? I don't know what you're talking about. You gotta think harder, Joshy. I want Padre. I don't know what Padre is. <laughs> I don't know. This can't be real. What the fuck is Padre? I want your Padre. Hang on, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I know what this is about. This is about the money my dad owes you, isn't it? Oh, uh, well, actually it is. I didn't think you knew about that. Well, he told me about it last week. I mean, I can't believe you transported me to another dimension just because my dad owes you five pounds. I mean, I've got the five pounds here in my fucking pocket if you want it. I can get it out for you now. Excuse me, it doesn't matter that it's only five smackaroonios. It's the principle of the thing. Anyway, you can go back home now. <gasps> I'm back. I'm back in the real world. My wrists are fine. I'm not dead. I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh, YouTube. You won't believe the morning I've had. Bloody hell. Jesus Christ. Well, I guess, as I'm not dying now, we better start this review. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about Fear the Walking Dead, Season 7, Episode 9. This video will contain spoilers for the entire episode, so please do keep that in mind. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. So, this episode begins with Alicia waking up in a random house with this new dude called Paul, and if you were hoping for a continuation of the cliffhanger that we had in the last episode, where Alicia declared that she was going to war with Strand, then you're going to be bitterly disappointed, because in this episode, Alicia wakes up in an entirely new location, and, you know, I had the same feeling that I felt pretty much throughout this entire season of Fear the Walking Dead, and that it feels like I've missed an episode. You know, I've said this many times already, but it's so true. Like, pretty much every episode of Fear the Walking Dead that I watched this season... You watch it, and the characters are in completely different locations, the story's just jumped ahead for some reason, and you're kind of watching it thinking, what did I miss? What the hell is going on? And that's what it felt like this episode. I mean, I was expecting to see a continuation from the last, you know, the last episode of Cliffhanger, because Alicia declaring war is quite a big thing, you know, in this in this universe. But nope, the, uh, the Fear of the Walking Dead decides to take a detour so uh, Alicia can spend some time with this deaf dude in this house who likes playing music. Okay, whatever. This dude has his music up so fucking loud, and part of me thinks that, well, maybe if he didn't play his music so bloody loud, he wouldn't have gone deaf in the first place. 
But anyway, this dude is playing his music and he's unaware that a walker is moving towards him. So Alicia smashes his stereo because that's the only thing that gets his attention because she's shouting at him and he's not turning around. So she smashes the stereo and that kind of, you know, gives him a heads up and he turns around and sees the walker and then he starts going crazy at Alicia. What have you done? Why did you break my stereo? He doesn't sound anything like that. I don't know where that, where that accent was from. Anyway, I've just defended someone in America now with that terrible accent. But basically what happens is that he wants a new stereo. So he says that he needs to go and search to find one and Alicia accompanies him. And at first Alicia is like, look, dude, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not gonna find your stereo. And he's like, if you don't find my stereo, then I'm as good as dead because this stereo is the only thing that blocks out my the voice of my dead wife. And I was just like, that doesn't make much fucking sense to me. If you're deaf, how does it block out her voice? How does how does a noise, you hearing a noise, prevent a noise in your head when you can't hear the noise? You can't hear the music, unless it's the vibrations, because obviously they make a point in this episode that's saying that deaf people can feel the music. And yes, I know Beethoven, you know, he's been reported that he carried on making songs and, you know, whatever, conducting after he went deaf. But I don't know. I, I don't know what the, what, what, what's, what's going on here. Someone explain. Is it because the vibrations block out the noise from his wife in his head? I, I don't fucking know. It just seems like nonsense to me. So prior to this, the stalkers are looking for Alicia and they go to this dude's house and Alicia is hiding there and she's hiding in the piano. Like of all the places you could hide in the house, you decide to hide in the piano and then the dude plays the piano and it's not working properly and he's like, hmm, is there something wrong with this piano? And then Paul, the deaf dude's like, nope, nope, it's just broken. Oh, okay, bye. Like, just look in the fucking piano. You've already broken into this dude's house with like three people. Why are you not look? Why, why not look into the piano? Oh, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna go now. But anyway, yeah, Alicia and Paul go to this like concert hall, I guess. I don't know what, it, what, what the correct term for it is, but it, you know, it looks like a place where you play music and conduct music, whatever. And they go there to look for a stereo. And then Alicia exits the building. And outside the building is Arno, the dude from... The, is it, the, let me just look, sorry, very unprofessional. The Stalkers, I forgot their name. The Arno, the dude from the Stalkers is outside. And he says to Alicia, he's like, ah, I knew I would find you here. Or something along those lines, like I figured you'd be here. And I was just thinking, why? Why? Why would you figure Alicia would be at some random concert hall? Why? <laughs> why would you think she was there? That doesn't make any sense. It's got nothing to do with her character. She's just there because she, you know, luckily accompanied this dude there. But did Arno figure out that, oh, Alicia's going to go with this guy to, to this exact location to search for a stereo? I knew you'd be here. How, how did you know she'd be there? Doesn't make any fucking sense. It's a completely random location. How did you know she'd be there? What are you talking about, man? So Arno wants Alicia dead, but because Arno is one of these dumb villains, instead of killing her himself, he tries to feed her to these walkers who he has, like, in a cart that he's carrying around. And apparently these walkers are the dead people from Alicia's old group, the group that we never actually saw. I still think that's stupid that this show made Alicia, uh, you know, Alicia, sorry, a leader. And then we never saw it happen. We never saw it. We, it's just something that we're told all the time. Oh yeah, Alicia was a leader of this group. She tried to lead us to, to Padre, but it went wrong. It's all her fault. Well, we didn't fucking see any of this. Didn't you think that'd be quite important? Why didn't you show us this? Instead of having an episode about a fucking dude in his house playing the bagpipes, which I'll get to that later. But anyway, yeah, Arno doesn't kill Alicia because Paul arrives and shoots him and scares him off. And then Arno and Alicia, like, jump in this car and hide. And uh, actually, before that moment, there's a scene where Arno drops the stereo that he finds from this concert hall because he's, like, trying to trying to shoot these guys and he's fumbling his stereo at the same time. And it's in slow-mo and trying to make us feel upset, like, oh, this mad stereo. Like, this is a post-apocalyptic show. People die. I don't care about this dude's fucking stereo. Why are you trying to make it seem dramatic and upsetting? No, not the stereo. No. What the hell is going on? What is going on in this show, man? And then Alicia and him get in the car. And prior to that, they were surrounded by walkers. So they jump in this car to hide. And then the walkers are just like, yeah, we'll just leave them in the car to have a talk. We won't bang on the walls or try to get in. Let's just leave these two in the car to have a conversation. You can't make this shit up, ladies and gentlemen. And then while they're in the car, um, what's his name? Paul's like, ah, oh, there's another stereo. We found the car stereo. Now it doesn't matter that I dropped my old stereo. Like, this whole entire season is just a plot of conveniences and coincidences. It is like a five-year-old wrote it, you know? The man went to find a stereo and he broke his stereo, but he went in a car and found another stereo. It is, it's like my daughter would write something like this. It's fucking atrocious writing. Anyway, as this opening skit alluded to, this episode does feature 
One of my favourite things of Fear the Walking Dead, dream sequences, and if you couldn't tell I'm being extremely sarcastic. So yeah, Alicia is having these dreams about this walker who is talking to her and is leading her to Padre, and we find out that that's the reason why she went to Padre in the first place, because she had a dream about a talking walker, and that, that's what inspired her to, to go to Padre, okay? Whatever, I mean, I thought Alicia was clever, this seems pretty fucking ridiculous, but okay. And then Paul's like, oh, you've got to believe in your dreams, man. This dream must mean something. You've got to believe in it. No. No. Why are you telling people to believe in dreams about talking walkers? What is going on? What's going on? Honestly, I don't think that I could live in the world of Fear the Walking Dead. I couldn't live in a world where people talk like this. It would drive me fucking insane. If I had people coming up to me going, you gotta believe in, in your dreams, Josh. That, that dream you had last night about, about that talking dog who told you to go to the candy store. You gotta believe in it, man. I would go fucking nuts. If I had to live in this universe, I'd end up like Negan. I would turn into Negan and just go around the country killing people. I'm deadly serious. I couldn't handle this shit. I can't deal with these people. They're all fucking morons. So Paul then radios Arno. And he's like, hey Arno, uh, Alicia has now betrayed me as well. So if you come back to my house tonight, uh, you can get her, I, I guess. Why would she be going back to his house if he betrayed her? I don't fucking know. But it's a, it's a trap. He's trying to set up a trap. And then, of course, Arno falls for it and he arrives at the house. And he's like, Alicia, I'm, I'm going to find you. And they storm the house and, you know, try and get in. And conveniently, some walkers appear in just the nick of time, you know, to take out some of Arno's men. And then Alicia retreats into this room with Paul, and this is quite possibly one of the most dumbest scenes I've ever seen, but it, it's fucking hilarious. So Alicia is in this room with Paul, and Arno's on the other side of the door, and Alicia says something like, oh, I won't be able to get past this guy, like, how, how can I get past him? And Paul says, don't worry, he can't find you if he can't hear you. Okay then, I mean, is Arno like a clicker from The Last of Us? Does he have to hear people to locate them? Very bizarre. But anyway, what happens next is that Paul plays the bagpipes, which stuns Arno, stuns him into submission on the other side. Like when Tobey Maguire smacked those pipes against Venom in Spider-Man 3. No, not the bagpipes! Ah! That's just so stupid, right? So anyway, it's a dumb scene, but putting all joking aside, I assumed the reason why Paul wanted to make this noise, make this distraction, was so that Alicia could escape by like smashing a window or doing something noisy to escape, right? So he's playing the bagpipes, he, she smashes a window, gets out and Arno can't hear her smashing the window because of the bagpipes. I mean, that's still kind of dumb. I still think that's a very dumb setup, but it would make some kind of sense. But what happens in the show makes no fucking sense because he's playing the bagpipes, Paul's playing the bagpipes, Arno walks in the room, Alicia is nowhere to be seen at this point in time. But then what happens is we see Alicia appear on screen from the right hand side running past the windows in this room which Paul is looking out of whilst he's playing his bagpipes. So how the fuck did Alicia get out of the house? Because she obviously didn't go out the window. Because if she went out the window, she wouldn't have been running, she wouldn't have appeared in frame from the right hand side, from the side of the house. So how did she get out the house? Why didn't they make her smash a window or, you know, try and open a window and it didn't work and she, climbed, and she smashed it and climbed out the window? That would have made more sense. As it stands, I have no idea how she got out of the house. Did she dig a fucking hole and get out of the house? I, I don't know. How did she get out? There were windows there, but she appears from the side of the house. What, what is going on? It doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't make any sense. And then we have this scene of like Paul playing the bagpipes. And he's got a tear down his eye because like I said, there was some throwaway dialogue earlier in this episode where he's like, the bagpipes, the bagpipes are my wife instrument and she's dead and I can't play them. So this is supposed to be sad, right? I'm supposed to watch this and go, oh, he's playing the fuck pipes and he's going to die. This is so sad. And it was just, yeah, who fucking cares? I don't fucking care. I don't care. Like I said, I don't care about this dude. I don't care about his wife. I don't care that he couldn't play the bagpipes. He didn't want to play the bagpipes. This is fucking nonsense, man. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. This show is like a comedy now. It is like a comedy. It was unintentionally hilarious. It entertained me because it's just so ridiculous. Like, oh, oh my God. Alicia escapes Paul's house. She has some more bullshit hallucinations about, you know, this talking walker. And then she passes out. And then she wakes up in Morgan's place because, you know, this, this show has a habit of characters passing out and then 
then waking up somewhere else it's just a lazy way of moving characters to one place to another without you know without the need of it being explained oh she passed out and we found her so that's why she's here now like it just happens so often on this show so she gets there and then she's like right morgan i've got to go now i need to go morgan because i'm going to go back to teddy's bunker and use their radio to recruit people to fight against strand and i have two questions in regards to this i mean question number one what exactly are you going to do, Alicia, right? Are you just going to get on the radio and go, Hi, uh, everyone out there. I, I know you've had a tough time with the apocalypse and all, and, you know, you've also survived a nuclear blast, but uh, do you want to come and, and help me fight this random dude? Do you want to come and help me and, you know, potentially get killed fighting this guy? No? Nope. No one wants to join? No? Okay, then. And question number two is just, why? Why are you doing this? Like, I still don't buy this war between Strand and Alicia. Strand's just chilling in his tower. Just let him live in his tower. He's not doing anything. Why are we going to war over that fucking dude? I can't remember his name. Will, that's it, who died. He was in like one episode. Who cares? Just let Strand have his tower. Why are you going to war? We've seen so far this season that there are plenty of places where, you know, there isn't radiation where you could live. I mean, fucking Paul's house, he had electricity in his house somehow. He had electricity and he had food. Go there. Why, why, just leave, why, why are you going to go to war, go somewhere else, leave this place, go, you know, or just leave the, leave the radioactive zone, just fucking go, why are you going to war with Strand, there's no need, it doesn't make any sense, and like I said, why would random people join her, it doesn't make any sense, but anyway, that's about all I have for this episode, really, it was just kind of incredible, really, like, absolutely incredible, this is a mid-season premiere as well, a mid-season premiere, and it's about a dude, just a deaf dude in his house. That's the mid-season premiere for one of your shows. It's like AMC's, one of AMC's, you know, biggest shows. It's just about Alicia with this random guy. I can't believe it. Like, it, you know, in one way, I almost admire the balls of the writers. You know, for them to be like, this is going to be our mid-season premiere about a dude who plays the bagpipes. That's what it's going to be about. Exciting stuff. You know, on one hand, I'm almost like, you know what? Fair play. This, this idea is so fucking batshit crazy. So insane that you do this for a mid-season premiere. I actually kind of respect it. Despite the fact that it's terrible. I kind of respect that you're just going against, you know, every established rule completely. And just being like, yep, this is our mid-season premiere. This is what's going to bring people back to this show. Sorry, hit the microphone. I, I don't know. One, one, I, it's just insane. Insane. But, you know, good comedy value, nonetheless. Good comedy value. I think the, I'm just going to have to treat this show as a comedy show now. It's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts below. Uh, what did you think of this episode? Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy it? Are you crazy? But yeah, did you enjoy it or uh, did you dislike it? Like I did as much as I did. And um, yeah, I'll see you all very soon. I'm hoping to review episode two on the weekends. Uh, I've got my daughter this weekend, so I might be a bit late, but I'm hoping to get it out this weekend, episode two. And then there's also, there's like a prequel. There's like a prequel to the prequel series about um, Riley that I saw in AMC. And I think it's only one episode or it's like six mini episodes. But it's only like 40 minutes long. So I'll probably, I'll probably do something about that as well. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it. And uh, I need to go change my t-shirt. I really should have worn like a, a crappier t-shirt for me to cover it in fake blood. Because this is, this is quite a nice t-shirt. Now it's ruined. These are the things I do for you, YouTube. But um, yeah, I had fun making this video. And I know there's going to be the odd comment in the, the comments below. Where, you know, from someone who goes, Why do you talk about Fear the Walking Dead if you hate it? I'm going to just be honest and come out and say, because it's fun. I like making these videos. I like ripping it to pieces. I like making stupid skits. It's fun. So I'll carry on talking about Fear the Walking Dead, even if it is a pile of shit. So anyway, on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you to my best buddies. Thank you to my best buddies. Thank you to my best buddies for giving me some money. This might be the weirdest video I've ever made, and that's saying something, right? I get I dress up as a guy in a ginger beard. Fucking hell.